I'm Tom Gert, Technical Director for Micromatic. This video will detail proper recirculation line cleaning procedures in accordance with the Brewers Association standards. When cleaning lines, it's always important to follow all the safety procedures as outlined on the back of the specific chemical that you're using. Uh, it's also important to uh, always work from the floor with chemicals uh, as these can be hazardous. We don't want to spill these products. When cleaning lines, it's always important to wear gloves and goggles in the process. We're going to go in the cooler here and we're going to connect number one to number two, number three to number four. Now we only have four lines hooked up here. We're just going to clean this, this uh, four product tower right on the bar here. So we have, um, we talked about this on the inside and I'll keep jumping back and forth here, but these are the flushers that we had talked about in there and basically um, you can see that it looks like the top of a keg basically, except it's got a, a uh, check ball uh, lifter in there. We make a number of different flushers to accommodate, but not always, okay? So if you have an oddball coupler that, that we, sorry, that we don't make a flusher for, we have what's called a hard coupler or a duplex coupler which is basically just hex nut threads. So what we would do is basically hook this on the hex nut to the next one. So instead of using this piece of gear. So either way, here, just because it's easier, I'm gonna use the flushers just because we have them both. But in some cases, like for you guys, you have so many brands, you're not gonna find the flushers to accommodate all those couplers. So you, you may have to use a duplex coupler or what we call a hard coupler to hook, hook those two together. But the most important thing is we have to make sure that we're in order, okay? So I know this is number one. So basically it hooks up just like a keg. There's gonna be pressure in the line so you're gonna get beer out. <laughs> There's number two. And we're gonna basically hook these two together. Here's number three. And number four. Okay, so typically what, what you should do is set those over a bucket just in case you have a leak. Then you can keep going to the bucket and making sure you're not, um, you're not overflowing the bucket. Second thing is, these are called fobs. Basically what they do is they stop the flow of beer when the keg goes empty, okay? So in the cleaning process, we have to make sure that these are all in the bypass mode. So basically what we would do is lift the lever in order to keep these so we can go in either direction. So what we'll end up doing is we're, we're actually going to be coming down number one, going through our flusher and coming back up number two. So we somehow have to be able to keep this off the seat so it doesn't stop the flow. So we're gonna put all of these in the bypass mode so, or the cleaning mode, okay? So if you're in a store that has a long run and you have fobs present, these are a huge money saver, but we have to make sure in the cleaning process that we bypass these, okay? The other thing we have to make sure of, <laughs> when we start the cleaning process, when chemical starts to pass through the system, we have to come in here and bleed these full of chemical because these drains get really gunked up on here. So we actually have to put chemical through the drain in order to keep this from uh, getting plugged up or clogged up. So that's really the process in here, that's it. Hook number one to number two, number three to number four, number five to number six, number seven to number eight, number nine to number 10. That's it, takes literally a couple seconds to hook up in here. Okay, so this is a machine. This is the big machine. This is what we call the 300 plus, which means it can clean 300 plus feet of tubing. We've had some of these go, this can usually go up to 900, 1,000 feet uh, and still give us a gallon a minute depending on, on what we have. So this is the big machine. It doesn't come with a cord purposely because again, we never know where in your accounts where the electricity is gonna be. So you only have to buy one extension cord. Like <clears throat> with my guys, we clean so many different accounts if the furthest plug away is 20 feet, we buy one 20 foot extension cord and we use that all the time. So basically here we know our, our power is close by. The hoses are also detachable on this. So for easy transport, they're all made with quick disconnects. So basically, 
Why are the lines so long here? I mean, it seems like you're just there's a huge misconception in our business that if you get over 20 or 30 feet, it can't work properly. Oh. All right. So you guys are like, we dispelled that rumor quick. <laughs> Anytime during class, anybody can come in here and pour a perfect beer. We keep all these hooked up during class so people can see that. You know. So again, we have a suction side. What you can tell the difference, really super fine screen, so we don't suck up any of the crap we're taking out of the lines. We're going to use these, uh, these sinks here as our set of buckets. The first thing we're going to do is just get the wa uh, water running. We're just going to use cold water to flush out. Typically in this process you use a lot of a lot of rags. There's a box full of those right back there. If somebody grabbed that for me, I'd appreciate it. Now, does it matter for cold water or hot water? It does matter. You don't ever want to get over hundred degrees in a beer system. Okay. The reason for that is some of the tubings, especially our tubing, sure. um, it's made out of a space age material called nylon eleven and it's very sensitive to heat. You can actually ruin the tube by putting hot water through it. I'm just trying to get as much beer out of the line so we don't make a huge mess here. The reason why we have so much coming out is because of all that tubing coming down the wall there. So typically, obviously, you guys would have handles. What, what you would normally do is, is line up these handles on the bar in the right order so that you never screw up, you know, your order. When you go to put the handles back on, you can literally grab one and put it right on in order. Okay, so we're going to take the faucets off here and then we're going to hook all these together. We're going to hook our machine up as well as our, uh, we're going to jump each one of these together. Don't want to overflow my sink over there. Turn it off, thank you. Those are the opposite, right? It's righty loosey and lefty tighty. Um <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Never thought about it that way. Um these are the little jumper lines that we talked about. So they basically just take the place, they look like the back end of a faucet. So we're going to jump number two and three together in your case, depending on how many faucets you have, could be a number of them that you're jumping together. Like I say, typically the good rule of thumb is around 10 is the max, but if you have a short run, you can maybe do more. What would be the max for your short run? Um, it really depends on footage. When you say a short run, if you're Let's say 10 feet of line. Um, I would, a good rule of thumb is I would never go over 12. Just because, again, I know it's a time saver, but you really need to get that rapid turbulent flow of at least a gallon a minute. So you're going to have to turn the machine up more and more and more. The brown beer. OK, 
Okay, we have one hose that's a longer hose that we'll use for our drain. One important thing we forgot to talk about uh, in the classroom is that opposite weeks, in other words, if we're cleaning today, two weeks from today, we're going to start from the opposite end. So we're going to have reverse direction. So that reverses the flow in each line. So in this case, two weeks from today, we would clean from number four. So we would hook our machine up to number four so we get reverse direction. That's really important. Okay. So we have our sink full of water. We have all of our lines tied together. We basically are going to use that water to pump out all of the beer that's in the system currently. And this system was completely full of beer. So we're going to see that the beer immediately, as soon as we have pump pressure, you should see, in this case, we had Guinness on this line, so you should immediately see brown beer take off and go to the sink. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to adjust the flow so that we can get kind of somewhere around that gallon a minute flow rate coming out of this hose. So it, it may take, you know, a little while for you to get used to how much flow that is or whatever. So, get this going here. are starting to move through there. Here comes our beer. So you can see we're starting to get some uh, water flow into the drain. So if you look at this, we, again, we're just going to want to make sure that we got enough flow to give us kind of a somewhere around that gallon a minute flow rate. I'm going to give that just a little more pressure. And everybody always asks, well, how much pressure does it take? It depends. Every system's different. Okay. So you just have to get this flow rate. See, so, you know, I've got a really good flow rate coming back now. So I'm, I'm happy with the way that that's flowing. So basically now what we would do is just wait until we have all the beer pumped out, which could take, again, in a short draw situation like you were speaking of, it literally could take two minutes to push all that beer out. But in this case, we have a very long run here, so it'll take us a while to push this out. Now, you can kind of see, it kind of looks like almost like foam going through there, or bubbles. So that's the way you're gonna see, as soon as this gets water, it'll just turn to clear water, and then you'll be able to see really easy when when we have all the uh, beer out of the lines. Everybody still with me okay? Pretty simple so far. We also have on this pump, you'll see that there's a screen here. This is a removable filter that you have to change every once in a while, or not change, but actually clean out. We, tip, we recommend once every two weeks that you remove this, this cap and you'll see that that screen is really, really super fine in there. And basically that keeps uh, sediment and, and uh, the crud that you're cleaning out from going back through the pump again. So we have a screen here on the suction side, a really fine screen. We also have a really, really fine screen uh, before it goes actually into the machine. On the front here, there's a little gate valve here that I'm, I'm pressing this little, or I'm turning this little red valve here and that's how we adjust pressure on the pump. So obviously you open it up further, you get more flow. You close it off, you get less flow. We got lots of flow. What's that? 
Uh, just usually take the uh, faucet brush, brush it off in water. So you can see here, looks like there's nothing. So we're, we're clear water already going to down number three now and pretty soon you'll see it'll come up number four. As Soon as it does that, really we're ready to go. Then we can use chemical, we'll, we'll get a, a gallon of water in the sink and then mix our chemicals in there. Uh, before we do that, we'll ask you to put safety glasses on just in case something weird happens here. We have a bunch of them on the end over here. So we're getting close. You can see there's very little foam coming through here. So we're getting close to uh, being 100% clear. Typically what you would do is go into the cooler and make sure that we had no leaks right away. Otherwise you'd be filling up those buckets with water. Um, there, you can see now we don't have any beer left in the line. So basically we're ready to go to step number two. Okay. So now we have to make sure we have a gallon of water in our sink. Okay, so as I mentioned in there, uh, the tops of these are actually measuring cups. And if we put, um, I have approximately a gallon of water in this sink right now. So again, as I mentioned in there, um, one gallon of water, one cupful would be 1% solution or 1% caustic in solution. Two caps full would be 2% caustic in solution and three cup capfuls would be 3%. Now typically what I instruct everybody to do is work from the floor with this. Okay, so once you open this, pour it, put everything on the floor because we've had several instances where people will knock the bottle onto the floor and it sprays all over. Um, as I said before, this stuff is very hazardous, but as long as you get rid of it quick, it's not a big deal. So you just wash it off, whatever area you get it on your skin, or if it's on the floor, get rid of it quick. Because if you leave it, it's going to cause, uh, on your skin especially, it will burn you um, pretty dramatically. So I always tell people just to work off the floor with the stuff. So, And you'll see when I pour this here, it, it's really pretty blue. So it's a really good shade of blue. So again, we can see the chemical in the, in the solution. So and you always want to dump the chemical into the water, not vice versa. You got a much bigger chance of the splashing out if you're dumping a large volume into a small volume. So you always want to work with the chemical into the water, never the other way. So there's two capfuls, that'd be 2%. Three capfuls would be 3%. Quickly put the cap back on this. I'll rinse out the cap just to get rid of the residual uh, solution in the cap. And then I'll store this back on the floor so it's out of harm's way. So we're all set to go. We're gonna, we already have all the lines full of water now. Um, once we get this solution working through the system, what we're gonna do is go back to the cooler and then bleed our, make sure our fobs are bled full and then also put a little bit of of uh, chemical out the drain mechanism on those fobs. So we'll fire this back up, get her pumping again. Make sure we have a return, which we do. Now we're going to take that return and put it into the same sink as we're taking from. So basically we're going to start diluting the chemical, but we want that first loop that goes through to be 100% chemical. So as soon as we see that this turns blue here, um, then we'll go back there and actually um, make sure that our fobs are bled clear. Look, just like in just like in real life, I made a mess. Yeah, that never happens. So we should see this start to turn blue any second here. Okay. See how we're blue there? You can really see it here. It's hard with with uh, the blue gloves, but you can see how we have blue 
solution. So we're going to go back to the cooler and make sure that our, uh, our fobs are, are bled full of solution and then also we get some in the drain. We should see that pretty blue color in our fobs. So as you can see we got blue basically just a couple times back and forth just to clean out that drain the best we can with the chemical. Now you can see we have blue over here. That basically is accumulated in a reservoir. And then once the line cleaning is done, we would actually drain that reservoir, obviously, because we don't want that hazardous chemical sitting around anywhere. So we have blue over here now as well, so same thing. That's really it. So we would obviously have our, our little egg timer set for 15 minutes. We would rely on that for 15 minutes of recirculation. You can see we got some blue coming back now. You can actually see it going into the water in here. If you guys can get up here close by, you see that blue going into the water? So we've, we've made one loop, so again, we would, we would circulate this solution now for 15 minutes. Um, once that 15 minutes is up, then basically we would go through the rinse out procedure. So let's assume that our 15 minutes is up, so we've, our timer has went off, we're at 15 minutes. So basically now what we need to do is rinse out that solution with, with fresh water. So we would run again, just cold water, just standard cold water. Once we get cold water, enough cold water to cover the, the, uh, the uh, um, suction side of the pump, basically what we will, would do then is to let the chemical and the water that we're flushing out here go down the drain. So as soon as we get enough water in here to, to, to begin the flush out process, then we'll pull the drain on this. Now while this is happening, while the chemical is still in the line, we would want to make sure and disassemble and clean the faucets. So while they're in the solution now, we would take these all apart, make sure that we brush clean them out completely. Also, you notice there's two brushes there. So we have a different size brush for the um, vent hole that's in the front of these faucets or in the bottom of the faucets, a typical standard American faucet. On the uh, Guinness spout, we would definitely want to disassemble the whole uh, spout assembly. The faucet you can take apart. It is a little bit difficult to get apart, uh, but it can be taken apart fairly easily. This is a good for you guys to see here. Take a look at that, uh, that screen on that faucet. Can you all see that, that buildup that's on that screen? That's the stuff we're trying to get rid of. See how, see how brown that is? Yeah. It's completely disassembled. Again, brush clean. Make sure you kind of hold these in the, in the sink so that it doesn't spray all over you. You don't want to get chemical on you. Again, safety glasses and uh, definitely uh, gloves. So once the faucets are clean, just goes in rinse water. Basically, this has a large uh, nut on the top of it. You just basically turn this nut off. It gives you access to the whole inside of the uh, Guinness style faucet or a stout style faucet. And you can see that those get really dirty. See how all that crud in there? You guys all see that? So it's really important to take these apart and brush clean these as well.
somebody wants to help out here, you can basically just unscrew this and show everybody that little fine filter that's in the bottom of that. Unscrew this. Yep. Where do you see that? Yeah, you can pull that right out of there. Pull this thing out? Mm-hmm. And basically all that does again is prevent the uh, a lot of the contaminants that we're cleaning out from just getting sucked back into the you have to rinse that every time. Yeah, every two weeks usually we recommend a Okay, our our faucet knobs were in order on the bar, so we can basically just put these all right back on. One thing that we uh, we didn't talk about, but it, it is uh, part of the process, especially um, when you're doing direct draw cleaning with a can. I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a few minutes. But we have a um, pH strips that you would test to make sure that you're pH neutral. In other words, before you put beer back in, you could test the water to make sure that it is strictly water and no chemical is present. Or you can buy a fancy pH meter. Uh, that does it electronically, basically. So you're looking pH neutral, which water is somewhere in the seven to seven and a half, depending on how hard the water is, different areas of the country, the pH is, is different, but it's usually about seven to seven and a half would be pH neutral. And obviously that's very important. You don't want to expose your customer to chemical. Um, and that's one of the reasons why this process is, is preferred. Again, if we recirculate for 15 minutes and we rinse for 15 minutes, there's no way we can leave chemical in the line. So, uh, but an extra added precaution, especially if you're doing can cleaning, would be to make sure you're pH neutral before you put beer back in the line. Super important. Okay, so I think we're good to go. All of our faucets are closed. We're going to go back, hook up beer, bleed our fobs full. Should be good to go. So basically we're just going to pull the uh, water out or rinse the water out, push the water out with beer. Typically again you would do this with buckets, you know you just have little two gallon buckets, that's typically what most people use. And I just know from experience that this, this line holds roughly uh, about one pitcher worth of beer as long as this line is. It's a really small diameter line. So you're going to see towards the end of this you'll start to see beer come through. So good, does it? So basically, you just pour off a small amount of beer until you get beer back in the lines, and then obviously it would straighten out. That's it. Pretty much covered it from start to finish. Obviously clean up the area. Typically what I always tell people is to leave it better than when you came because the tower does get splattered with beer and stuff. So typically while you're in the cleaning process it takes 15 minutes after you clean the faucets, you still have another 15 minutes of rinse. So then you could, you know, kind of just touch up, clean out the tray, get a little bit of chemical, dump down the drain, make sure everything's nice and tidy when you get finished up.